Okay, in this video, I'm going to be talking about electronegativity. Electronegativity. And before I go into to into this topic, I just want to say, before before I um sort of properly understood electronegativity, I didn't quite understand the link between electronegativity and say like atomic radius and um the atomic charge and all of those other qualities that um that atoms have and it was very very difficult to try and understand it without understanding the link between those concepts and it was especially difficult when when you have questions like you know sometimes on exams you get questions where they they have like maybe five marks six marks and they ask you to like ex explain they maybe give you two elements and they, ex they say explain the trend in this explain the trend in that and when you don't understand the concept and you don't understand how it's linked to other things like sometimes teachers will teach you the t concepts like very at very um separate intervals and won't really link them but eventually i i understood i finally understood the link between electronegativity and all those other qualities and why electronegativity works the way it does and also i i under i, I learned how it's linked to oxidation numbers and oxidation states which i'm going to go into in another video but not not this video so yeah, let me just go into electronegativity. So electronegativity, what is electronegativity? Now, when you look at the periodic table, <coughs> it's separated into obviously groups. So group one, group two, group three, group four, all the way up. And it's separated into periods. And if we look at the periodic trends in terms of um, atomic radius, um, outer shell ele outer electrons and stuff like that, what we find is that as we go down a group, so let's take group one for example, as we go down the group, the number of outer shells increases. So group one is characterized by the fact that all of the atoms in group one have only one electron in their outermost shell. And hydrogen is also in group one. So I could just put this, oh, let me use black. I could just put hydrogen here since it's, it's a group one um, element. It's a group one element. So as I was saying, as you go down this group, the number of shells increase. So hydrogen has uh one shell uh lithium has two shells uh sodium has three shells and it continues so four five six seven and it continues as you go down down the period and the nucleus of an element or the nucleus of an atom of an element is positively charged positively charged let me, let me use blue, it's positively charged. So it has a positive charge. And the electrons have a negative charge. So electrons, they have a negative charge. And this is not to scale, but yeah. Electrons have a negative charge. And as we've heard, opposites attract. And um, <laughs> this is no exception. The negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positively charged um, nucleuses. And maybe this is where opposites attract came from. I don't know. But anyway, so the, the negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positively charged nu nucleuses. And the force between these two particles, this negatively charged particle and this positively charged particle, there's a there's a force called the Coulomb force, and it's like um you know the um attractive force between the electron and the and a, the nucleus in this case. Um, it the the equation for it is that the force is equal to a constant, and I won't go into the constant since that's mainly um physics. Like 
But you can find out that constant if you simply just maybe search this equation or, or search for the Coulomb force equation on, on Google or something. But the force is equal to the, 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 the a constant multiplied by one of the charges. So let's say this is the charge of the, um, the nucleus. And let's say that um, this this other Q, so this big Q, is the charge of the electron. Actually, let's swap these two values over. So this would be the nucleus and this would be electron, simply because the nucleus is, is bigger than the electron. This is small, small, lowercase, uppercase. And this, we divide this by R squared. So what this equation is saying is, as the distance between these two particles increases, the force decreases because they did this is divided by r squared which is r squared me being the distance squared and uh, so therefore if the distance increases the force decreases and q q so q would be the um, the charge of the electron and q big q would be the charge of the nucleus so as you can see from this as you go down the period this does this charge does increase Whereas saying, saying uh, looking at it from the perspective of there being one outermost electron, this Q doesn't increase. But the thing is, R squared increases much more than Q, than Q increases. And so the force decreases as you go down the group. And this means that the, the, the um, if we would look at it from the perspective of ionization energy, so that's the energy needed to remove an electron from a atom that ionization energy you need you don't need as much energy to remove el electrons from atoms as you go down the period because the force of attraction between this outermost electron on the outer shell and the nucleus is weaker and so if we look at this from this perspective of um of this periodic table we can see that this force decreases as we go down but if we go across now, if we go across this period, and let's choose the first, the, the not the first period, but this period here of lithium in it. As we go along, the trend which has been observed is that the number of e electrons on the outer shell, which is determined, is, 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 is determined basically by the group. So this is group two, so there's two electrons, and this is group three, so there's three electrons. The group, since there's two electrons, this means that this small Q here doubles. So Q is equal to now 2Q. And so therefore, since this is proportional to F, and if this increases, F increases, therefore, as we go along the period, the force increases between the outermost electrons and the nucleus. And so therefore, the trend as we go along the period, along the period, so from group one to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, to seven, um, the force of attraction between the outermost electrons and nucleus increases and because this force increases as i said before this is as this increases this decreases and so since this has increased in this case r squared is going to decrease so we can also say that as we go along um the force increases so the force increases and we can also say that the radius, radius or radii, since we're talking about a plural as we're going along, radii decreases. And I know I'm not going straight to going straight into the definition of electronegativity, but I think this is the sort of intuition behind it is important. So as the force increases, the radii decreases. So as we go along, it maybe starts at this size and then the next one is maybe this size and then it's this size like slightly smaller this size and as we go along the the radii decreases but the number of the the force increases so therefore the ionization energy if you want to if you if you understand ionization energy as i said it's the force required to move remove one of outermost electrons that force that energy increases because of that increase in force and so how does this relate to electronegativity well Let's look at it this way. If we were to add more electrons to that outer shell, right? 
if we were to add more electrons to the outer shell what would happen is that let's say, let's take an example so let's take um maybe lithium for example lithium li the lightest element in the periodic table if we take lithium for example of uh, not element light not lightest element lightest metal lightest metal so if we take lithium for example um li this has one outermost electron and if we were to bond lithium to another element say maybe um let me see let me see maybe sodium sodium is right underneath it so sodium and lithium so maybe this li this is the, the electron of of lithium let me actually put it here so that i can put sodium next to it if we were to bond lithium with sodium na so there's sodium, uh, salty, salty. Well, anyway, so if we were to bond lithium with sodium, what we would notice is that since lithium has um, a more of a tendency to um, to, uh, to 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 pull the outer electrons toward it, what we would notice is that lithium would have these outermost electrons closer to it than sodium closer to it than sodium so what we would see is that when lithium and sodium are bonded to each other lithium would be hogging or or it would be greedy with the electrons because it's got this all this strength and and and, and ability with the outermost electrons whereas sodium this r remember r is r squared is bigger with sodium Whereas with lithium, it's smaller, so the force is greater with lithium, and the sh the force is not strong with the the young pad one sodium. So, what would happen is the electrons, these electrons which are being shared, will be closer to lithium than they will be to to sodium, and so lithium will, will if we draw this as a probability of the location of these shared electrons, these shared electrons. Let me just draw lithium here and sodium here. These shared electrons are much more likely to be around lithium because lithium, they like the strong guys, the strong atoms. So the electrons are much more likely to be in this area than they are to be in the area of sodium. And so because of this, we say that lithium is more electronegative and as you can see lithium has the let more 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 of a probability of having negatively charged electrons so we say it's electronegative whereas sodium sodium has less of a tendency to have these negative electrons to um pull closer towards it so we say we don't we don't actually say it's electropositive but you can't you could um intuitively imagine that sodium is more electro electropositive um and that's basically the idea behind electronegativity the idea that if you have lithium bonded to um say another element this would have more electrons um electrons would be more closer closely pulled to lithium and the way the um, um the way scientists have measured electronegativity i believe is usually by bonding it um, to other elements so it's basically a comparison so they bond it to other elements and they look and they say hmm which elements in this bond has the electrons closer to it or something like that I don't know how they do it but some something along those lines and they say oh this does so you may be wondering um, where does the scale begin do they have an imaginary element um, not exactly the scale, which we, we call it the Pauling scale, the Pauling scale. So there's a guy called Linus Pauling. He was a big believer in, um, well, taking in a lot of vitamin C. I won't go, I won't go into that. But Pauling, Linus Pauling. I think he won a couple of Nobel prizes in chemistry for his theories on like resonance and yeah benzene and all of that sort of stuff yeah but yeah, yeah. linus pauling um created a scale of electronegativity and this scale is relative to hydrogen so hydrogen 
hydrogen has an electronegativity on the pooling scale, on the pooling scale, has an electronegativity of zero, I think. It's either zero or one. But yeah. So all of the other elements on this pooling scale are compared to hydrogen. That's the that's the main idea. They're all compared to hydrogen. So as you go from hydrogen, elements are become more or less electronegative. So yeah, that's the general idea behind electronegativity. I, I think the um electronegativity of hydrogen is probably probably one, but yeah. That's if you've got any questions let me know. And don't forget, um see you in the next video.